Do you struggle with things that pull you away from God? Is temper, selfishness, or strong ambition taking too much control over your life? These are things cause stress. These are things that cause stress in life and destroy relationships. Are you suffering from a nasty temper? Do you have that selfishness in your life? And do you have too much ambition? Well, let me tell you, you don't want to fall into that. You don't want to have that nasty temper or selfishness and too much ambition. You see, those things are not of God. Think of that. These things are not of God. Dave here with another video from the Resurrection Center to help put control on a nasty temper, selfishness, and ambition. You don't see that as what is called the fruits of the Spirit. Fruits of the Spirit are qualities of people that are pleasing to God. It's good to have qualities that are pleasing to God. The fruits of the Spirit are seen in Scripture. You'll see it in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23. And I'll read that to you. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. And again, that's in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23. Did you notice that temper, selfishness, and ambition is not part of that list? When we consecrate ourselves through a series of life experiences of conviction, we find that we become more productive in the way God intended. Think about that. Let me say that again. When we consecrate ourselves through a series of life experiences of conviction, we find that we become more productive in the way God intended. What do I mean by that? The fruit we produce comes from letting our old self die while leaving it in the past. Think of what you produce comes from the harvest of your life. Your crop is what you sow into your life. The seeds planted for your future will eventually bear fruit. We must replant ourselves into new soil of life and let the old crop die as it was not productive. What I'm saying is the death of our old selves allows a more productive harvest of blessings, which brings a lot of fruit of blessings. We see this in John chapter 12, verse 24, where the scripture says, I assure you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains by itself. But if it dies, it produces a large crop. And that's in John chapter 12, verse 24. You see, understand this, some things must die in order to be productive. Certain seeds will not germinate into a plant unless they freeze during the winter. Jesus knew that his death would bring salvation to the world. The moment you became a Christian, your sinful nature died. We see this in Romans chapter 6, verse 6. Again, Romans chapter 6, verse 6. And the scripture says, for we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. And that's in Romans chapter six, verse six. It's not that simple. The moment you became a Christian, your sinful nature died, but there remained sinful aspects of your character that had not gone to their graves willingly. That's called temptation. You see, temptation is still there. Before you became a Christian, you were self-centered, right? We are born that way. You may discover selfishness lingering in your life when you ought to be freely sharing what you have in the name of Christ. We are instructed to be freely sharing what you have in the name of Christ, but our selfishness pulls us away from that instruction. What is the instruction you ask? It's in Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. And in Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, the scripture says, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Right? Freely you have received, freely give. And that's in Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. So let's look at this now. Did you have a temper? 
now as a Christian, you experience moments when anger bubbles up inside you. Now think of this, were you driven by ambition? You may still find yourself with the same motivation as you strive for recognition and the position in the kingdom of God. If you are in ministry, you have to be careful about that. If these sinful attitudes are allowed to remain alive, they will stifle the fruits of the spirit. We don't want to stifle the fruits of the spirit. No, your temper may prevent some from coming to Jesus. Your selfishness will hinder you from being a blessing to those around you. Your ambition could cause you to use others to meet your goals and not God's goals. Your family may be suffering because of some areas of your life that you have never allowed Jesus to put to death. Think of that. Your family could be suffering because some areas of your life have never been allowed to be put to death by Jesus. Jesus allows you to put things to death so that you can seek the Lord. It is ridiculous to say, but that's just the way I am. Some people say that, but that's just the way I am. Well, that is the way you were, but you don't have to be that way now. See, but that person died with Christ. You are a new creation, as we see in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. And that's in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. I'll say that again. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Now look at this. Allow God to complete his work in you and see what fruit your life produces. Be delivered from a temper, from that nasty temper. Be delivered from selfishness. And be delivered from that strong ambition. Open your heart to receive a double portion of blessings from the fruits of the spirit you show. From the Resurrection Center, my name is Dave.